welcome to this tutorial on how to set up control and the tempo via CV. I'm going to do a quick demonstration first and then I'll go into the full setup and what parameters you may need to change. So the first thing we're going to do is just simply create ourselves an EMI device because we're using that to send a signal out of reason. We're going to be using the MIDI loop back to bring it back in again and I'm controlling this all via CC2. And there we go, we are working. It is that quick and it's that easy. Um, because CV uh, goes from 0 to 127, obviously my tempo range will go from 50 to 177. There's no reason why we couldn't change some of the parameters and set up in the background to go from 100 to 227 or from 80 to uh, 207. And we're going to details of that a lot more. So let's look at how we set this up right from the start. Okay, the setup is going to consist of uh, having an external MIDI codex and remote file and also a MIDI loopback uh, piece of software. I happen to use this piece of software here called Loop MIDI. It's very straightforward to use, just set it up. Um, you don't really have to add anything, but I am actually going to add myself a new port name because I use the other ports already. So let's just call this Tempo Change. Simple add the plus and that's, set, that's that bit set up. The next bit we need to set up will be our um, MIDI codex and our uh, remote files. So again, if you want to download this file from the Dropbox, uh, it'll be in the description of where to get it from. Um, it, as you can see in this file, what we have is a folder called Propeller Software. All you need to do is drag that file and just drop it into the data program. It's going to tell you that this file already exists. Okay, and just say yes, merge it and that's it installed, the files. We will have a look at the files uh, in a minute, but first of all, let's actually go back and set some stuff up in Reason, and then it makes sense what these files are about when we come back to talk about them. So we've set up our MIDI loop back and we've installed our MIDI codex and our remote files. So what do them files actually do for us? Well, they've given us an extra surface controller that we can map to, and that's how we're going to get the data back into Reason. So obviously under preferences, Go to control the surfaces, click on add, other, and under the model, we've now got a new model which wasn't here previously called MIDI controller surface tempo. So you can select that. There is some data here which tells you about how we've set some ranges up, but we still have to, as it says, note the remote map will have to be updated. So I'll go through how we can update that. And this is where we can say, this is how we're gonna select our range. The other thing what we've got to um, add here would be our MIDI loop back itself. So there it is, tempo change, that's the one I set up earlier. So we select that and you can just click OK. And that's that done, so that's the surface control to get the information back in. So again, if we go and create our EMI uh, instrument, there we go, we're going to select our MIDI port, or our loop back, shall I say. We're going to Go to channel, uh, CC2, and yes, we're up and running. So we're going to do a real basic setup. First thing I'm going to add is a Aftermath. This is obviously a free rack extension, and what it allows us to do is really set the uh, CV signal, the value of that signal, so we can set them to different ones. And the other little utility I'm going to add is a robotic bean select switch. Um, so let's get these wired up. And then obviously we need to take the CV out and pull it into the CC in of our EMI. So now if we come down here and we start selecting our different switches, we're going to get different values. Oh, that's one thing to note out for. Okay, so I've got this down to zero, but it's only going down to 62. That's because this one's turned up, so I need to turn that down as well. So that will now give me my full range. It doesn't mean that if this is up here, up at um, 177 and I turn this up, it's going to affect it at all. It's because obviously this is using this as a base number and, it's, and this is one not quite being added to, but being merged with. So just bear that in mind. So you should really have that always set on to zero if we want to actually use these to flip around. 
Okay, so what happens if we want to set up um, a different range, say from 100 to 227? Let's have a look and see how we're going to do that. Okay, what we need to do is have a look at the files that we set up earlier. As I say, we, we added a, a MIDI codex file and we also added a, a remote map file. They're, they're both uh, important in their own right and changing, depending which file you wish to change, obviously you can get different options. So the first option we're going to go for is actually changing the uh, tempo itself, so we can change the tempo range. So as you can see, I've gone into program data, propeller software, remote codex, MIDI codex, and here is our file, MIDI controller tempo, that is our one. So we just need to get that edited. Um, don't open these files in Notepad, make sure you have a proper editor to open them up. If you open them up, as I say, in something like Notepad or whatever, and you actually edit these files, even though you can read the files, you're going to start losing what's called white spaces and the formatting will actually go. Um, so don't actually open them, or whatever you do, if you've opened them up in Notepad, don't save them. I have to use uh, this little program. Okay, so here's the file. And this is really where the, um, the goodness is working. So what we've, we've done here is usually this value is between 0 and 127. And we've actually set it between 0 and 999, which if you think about it, that is the scale of the tempo normally, between 0 and 999. As I say, if it's set to one zero and 127, it means it's going to jump around about every 8, or 7.8 I think it works out. So it's going to jump up the tempo around about every 8. So the, what you have to do is scroll down to this portion of the file, and this is where we are actually setting our base value. So 49, what that actually means is it's going to give us a tempo between 50 and 177. And as you can see, I've actually added a few other values in. If you remember when we were actually setting up the surface controller, there's a little bit of notes in there to say this is what's been set up on these other uh, CC. Uh, number channels so you can obviously if you're thinking oh this is going to clash or with, with one of your other controllers you can obviously select uh, whatever numbers you want in fact even though it goes up to 127 don't only go up to 119 uh, because that's all that the EMI supports so even though there is these extra um, entries don't use them ones but it could be that you know oh this is a spare one and I want to have a range between 100 and, as I say, 227. That's all I have to add, is add that in. Click on Save. But I will also have to add up, uh, change the remote map. So I'm just not going to change that for the moment. So as I say, this is what we're setting our base value to. The next file, and I'm not going to save it, and our next file we need to look at is under Maps, and it'd be under Other. And again, it's called MIDI Controller Tempo, but obviously it's got a, a remote map name on the end. And it's, it's even, it's so small. This is the value what you need to change then to match what you've changed in the other file. So if you're saying, oh, this one's clashing and I wanted to use that CC55, you just put 55 in. Again, do not edit these files in Notepad or you know a basic a text editor make sure you've got one which supports white spaces as you can see this one is actually you can see these are like tab controls um, so this is why this part this editor is quite good and it supports it so by changing this number I then have to then match whatever I'm doing in reason with this number and it would follow it around so let's say for example we will put in 55 we will save this I am going to go back to reason now and it's no good just coming here and going, oh, I'm going to use 55. And think it's going to work. Because we've already got the mapping loaded, so that remote map's loaded. You don't have to restart Reason. All you've got to do is a little tick box. So on your surface tempo, untick it. Tick it again. Make sure you've got a nice green tick. If you've got a red cross there, you can double click on it and it'll give you um, more details of what the error is. So now this should work and there we go yep so I hope you followed that that last bit <laughs> I'll go through it let's go through it again and I can change it back and then we know exactly where where we are 
So again, I'm going to come into this file. I'm going to put that back to 02, because that's the CC channel I like to use. Okay, back in Reason itself, as I say, this isn't, oh yeah, sorry, that will work, but if I then move this back down to 02, we've got nothing working. So I'm going to reload that remote map file into preferences, untick, tick, and then we should be away. And there we go. Okay, so if you've got any questions, obviously you can reach us at Reason Talk. Um, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you for now.